Is it like a Mr. Holmstead, Connor Gibson, nice to meet you face. Nice, nice to meet you. Um, all my questions about the clients, the utility, coal burning utility clients. Um, I'm wondering, I mean, what, all the, honestly, all the technical expertise you have, your experience with the EPA as a lawyer, if you recognize uh, the threat and the cost of climate change, why not use these skills in a way to help agencies solve this problem? Like, it, it seems like every time there's a solution proposed, um, perhaps for obvious reasons, if you're hired by Southern Company or Duke Energy, you're, you're opposing the rules, but there's never a solutions end to any yeah, of that. That's not true. There, I, we, we've proposed a lot of solutions, they're just solutions that you don't like. That's the problem. Well, like the illegal weak mercury rule, Southern which I've written CCS. about. <laughs> right, which is, which is interesting, because I don't think that you would say CCS is a worthy investment, I don't think I would say that CCS is a worthy investment or a viable solution, but these are, you know, why not? Why not work proactively to help, you know, these industries, and especially the people employed by them, transition away from a high carbon based economy into one that is not, you know, having all these external costs on humanity. Well, I, I, you know, some other point, I, I, would, I would be happy to have this conversation with you. I'll tell you many of the things that, that look at my clients are dedicated to providing one of the most important things that people have and that is a supply of low-cost electricity. But at you what view, cost? You, you view but these at what cost, Mr. Homestead? At, at, at a cost that seems to be reasonable all around the world. All around the world, people have chosen this as a way to provide low-cost electricity. Because right? until now, there have not been many viable alternatives. I mean, the, the companies you're representing have, have resisted investment in clean energy. They've that, that resisted has, policy incentives that, for not, the solutions. Not true. So, so, so sometimes you need to tell me about who's investing all this money if it's not my clients. Well, my clients are investing huge amounts. They're investing some, but they are also hiring people like yourself, Mr. Holmstead, to block all the regulatory solutions. And that's the part I don't understand. So are, are you Why? filming this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is my colleague, you, Mitch. You don't have my permission to, to use this, so... Um, uh, you know, I, I, I really don't like... But you're a party of the me. conversation with me, I, are you not? I, 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 I certainly was a, 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 a giving a public presentation, yeah. And, I, and, I, and as I say... Giving a public presentation, but, but, the, but my question about solutions to climate change, why... Why, when, when you would, why, when, why when just you really, work for when you really, when you really Southern to, against these regulatory I, solutions? I, I, there, this, because the regulatory so solutions that have been proposed are illegal, right? They're illegal? They're illegal. In yeah. your opinion, these solutions are illegal. The, the, things, that EPA, the things that EPA has, has proposed, I think, are clearly illegal. And I think that will come out. And I think... Okay, and I, I understand I, that. I think we need to have... But I don't understand why, why, viable, why you're not working on viable solutions. I why? am. But it, it seems like the, the opinion at events, all of these events, whether it's for cross-state air pollution, whether it's for mercury, whether it's for carbon regulations, is, is on the side of industry needs more time, industry thinks it's illegal because of this, industry uh, you know, is opposed and to this solution, but isn't opposed to the overall concept. That just seems like coded language to make sure there's never regulation implemented that could affect your clients adversely. I, I understand it's not easy for a coal-burning utility to stop burning coal and move to other fuel sources, even when gas becomes more economical, even when renewables become more economical. But I don't, I don't understand why just, why just choose to be a, a hired gun as a roadblock? Why, why? Own, I mean, this is a. You, you've said yourself, global warming is an immense problem. I, I think you're misconstruing my role. I actually am quite involved in a number of efforts to try to do sensible things. But, but but people are more interested in having me talk about... Sensible in terms of the science of climate change? Absolutely. Because this rule falls short of scientific targets that are needed. You've said, and I agree with you, that 2005 emission baseline rates are, are not strong enough. But, I mean, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says 1990. 1990 is the baseline that needs to be used. So we differ on our opinion there, and that, that I think they're not ambitious kind of, enough. That's kind of silly because it, it, from a science perspective, the, the baseline is irrelevant. From a science perspective, the question is, what are the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere? So that's, it's kind of silly right. to even in look at the in order to keep the temperature between, below a 2 degrees Celsius average rise, which right now we are projected to way overshoot, including with this rule, we will not meet that scientific goal. So if you say you're concerned about climate change, how, why are you trying so, to make uh, weaker or... or even kind of insinuating I, you may I'm litigate curious, I'm, I'm, I'm against curious, this rule. I'm curious about what your solutions are. 
Tell, tell me exactly oh, how you would I would, I would look for a much bolder emissions target. I would look for one that, that does what the science says we need to do in order so to avoid a 2 degree Celsius do, temperature we, limit. Let's say we shut down all the industries in the United States. What would that do to Shut down all the industries? Yeah, shut it down completely. What well, would that's, do? that's, that's, that's putting me in a box of saying that my no, solutions asked, are just I, to no, shut down no, industries. No, no, and that's not what I said. If that were to happen, that's why I said, why, why, why could we not work on a more collaborative way with these coal burning utilities, coal mining companies, to find a transition that works? I think they are talking with reasonable people. I don't think they're interested in talking to Greenpeace because sure. they, because you're viewed as a, as someone who's quite unreasonable on these issues. So my, my clients are very much involved in those conversations. They're investing enormous amounts of money on these issue, issues. Yes, right. but mostly to obstruct, it seems. Uh, so you're, how much, I, let's how say much you're one of the surrogates how, how they much, invested. How much is Southern Company invested to try to prove CCS? Uh, you tell me. I think you're the one that, that, that well, said no, that, I but I, I'm not sure that so CCS is a viable solution to climate change. It has, it has so how else, how, how else do com countries continue to provide reliable electricity if they don't burn coal? How can they possibly do that without CCS? Well, I think talking about the types of policy incentives that make uh, internalize the external cost of carbon that they're imposing on society, um, which are projected to be in the trillions globally over the course of decades, and to incentivize the industries that don't impose those external costs. Yeah, I, and that's, gonna, those gonna, are the policy I'm solutions that, that you're avoiding. Thank you, Mr. Olmsted. That man does not want to talk about solutions to climate change. <laughs>